Hello everyone and welcome to ninth uh, lecture on digital elevation models and application course. And in this particular topic, we are going to discuss a triangulated irregular network that is TIN and its derivatives. Uh, earlier also I have referred this uh, TIN because uh, this is another way of representing a surface. As we know that the digital elevation model is also one of the ways of representing a surface, so TIN is. And uh, it is not raster because digital elevation model is a typical raster data structure, but uh, TIN is a different data structure and uh, it is uh, uh, like uh, in uh, raster data structure we are having each unit is in square in shape, but here each unit is in, in triangular in shape but each triangle might be having different size and shapes. So, it is it definitely uh, very much differ from uh, typical raster or digital elevation models and uh, we also drive uh, the sometimes almost the same products as uh, using a digital elevation model especially slope and aspect. So, we will see what is basically exactly tin is and how these products uh, some of the derivatives can be derived using uh, TIN model. So, as we know that uh, uh, two data structures uh, to represent a surface, a rectangular grid uh, or a elevation matrix we also call them and a TIN which is a triangulated irregular network. This is based on a Dalloni triangulation uh, concept which we will discuss very soon. What basically the input data here in both the cases whether you are going to create a raster uh, for following the interpolation techniques or creating a tin, the input data is a point data. As uh, shown here that uh, data is point data, we can create a raster uh, of uh, say equal size of cells here uh, or we can also create tin. As you can also see here that when creating a tin, then uh, there are a network irregular network of uh, triangles have been made and this uh, area is representing the surface whereas here the entire uh, area or rectangular area uh, is representing the surface. So, this is one of the limitations which we will also see in case of tin that, that means that on the edges of the data at the margins or boundary of the data the tin is having limitations, but uh, there are some advantages which we will see here. The, as we know that the, the regular grids or the typical raster or dig, uh, our digital elevation models may not be adapted uh, to the complexity of the relief of the terrain. So, that uh, an uh, excessive number of data points is needed uh, to represent the terrain to a required level of accuracy. What does it mean is, here is basically that uh, whenever a detailed uh, 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 of terrain is required, the relief changes which are happening in a very small area, then in case of tin, smaller triangles will be formed and that relief uh, or the complexity of the relief can be represented very easily. Whereas, in case of raster, the cell size is fixed and once the cell size is fixed, then it does not matter what is the complexity of the relief. For a whole area, the same uh, cell size will be used, but in case of tin, uh, wherever it is required, it is adaptable to changes or adaptable to complexity of the terrain or relief. So, wherever it is required uh, to represent the terrain which is a complex, then a smaller triangles will be formed and wherever uh, the terrain is flat, then large triangles uh, will be formed. So, that is the adaptability of the tin uh, compared to our typical raster. So, triangulated irregular network can be defined as a surface as I have already said that both digital elevation model that is the raster is a surface. So, the tin where they are represented derived from irregularly spaced points and break line features and of course, uh, the data input is always in case of tin uh, is the point data. So, only from point data you can create a tin and each sample point or observation point for which we are having may be having the elevation or some other values like uh, 
pollutant value, con some concentrations and other things, then each point has an x y coordinate and a z value or the surface value and that is why it is used as to represent the surface. So, tin mon model represents a surface as a set of contiguous non overlapping triangles. Same as in case of raster also that each cell is a, a non overlapping. So, in case of a tin it is also contiguous and non overlapping triangles. Uh, within each triangle the surface is represented by a plane. So, be, uh, because the, 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 the this facet is a nothing but a plane for each triangle and uh, which forms the entire network and the triangles are made from a set of points called mass points. The input is always from the point. So, the basis of uh, this uh, 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 tin is uh, given by uh, a Russian mathematician Boris Delaunay and it is also called Delaunay uh, uh, triangulation method. Uh, uh, he gave this concept in 1934 and uh, it is uh, in some way it is very simple concept that, uh, he, that, that it, uh, this Delaunay triangulation is a proximal method. So, that it uh, benefits uh, it satisfies the requirement that a circle drawn through the three nodes or three input points and uh, there should not be any other node in between or any point here. For example, if a, a train a circle is drawn going passing through these three points 1, 2 and 3 then no other uh, triangle can be drawn within this circle. So, that is the Delaunay um, concept uh, about uh, this uh, triangulation and based on this then entire network of uh, irregularly spaced uh, triangles are formed. So, tin uh, uh, sometimes you may find in literature that some people have put tin along with the vector data structure. So, but in my opinion it is incorrect because it is not typical uh, vector data structure because vector data is a discrete data whereas, raster data is a continuous data and tin is also continuous. So, it is there, therefore, it does not fit as vector data neither exactly it fit with the raster data because uh, in raster each cell is having the same size and shape whereas, here each cell that is triangle having different size and shape. Uh, so, that is the uh, that is why it cannot be considered as a typical vector or a typical raster is a different system neither we can say is a hybrid system. So, uh, one is the vector data structure another one is the raster data structure and third one we should consider tin as a separate data structure because the tin represents the terrain surface as a set of interconnected triangular faces and this uh, when we create a tin and uh, there are four tables which are created and uh, in the system that uh, node table, edge table, x y coordinate table and z table. So, list of uh, like node table will have list of each triangle and its defining nodes whereas, edge table lists the three adjacent triangles for each facet and x y coordinate table will store of course, the node coordinates and z table will store either elevation value or some other value may be pollutants value and pH value or some other thing. Uh, Let us see the example. Example here is that uh, there are these uh, data inputs uh, are shown uh, numbered at been between 1 to 11 and uh, there are 4 tables as mentioned uh, that you are having node tables. So, each node is will have uh, like here if I say this is for the uh, triangle A. So, then there are it is triangle A is formed uh, by 3 nodes. So, 1 6 and 7. So, here 1 6 7. Let us take another example like a triangle F. Triangle F is formed by uh, 3 nodes 3 4 and 9. So, triangle F is formed by 3 4 9. Similarly, we will have the edge nodes uh, edge table. So, which will store this information. So, for triangle A the edges for triangle A the edges are B and K who are on the sides. Whereas, uh, for uh, for say example 
triangle a, uh, triangle f uh, the edges are e and g similarly we will have an xy coordinate table and z table uh, for all these uh, triangles which are representing these uh, uh, 11 input uh, points so uh, it's a continuous mass of triangles like your typical raster which is also a continuous data but it is having problems at the edges as we are seeing again and again even in this example if we would have created using these 11 points which are distributed in this space then within these points observation points input point we would have interpolations but on the other side we would have extrapolation as discussed uh, in the in the lecture in which we have discussed the spatial interpolation techniques but on the edges or beyond these observations we will have extrapolation in case of raster but here no construction of any tin because you do not have and it does not satisfy uh, the de Leone concept. So, therefore, uh, on the edges always you will have uh, problem. Another problem uh, with the uh, string uh, tin we will be face that we cannot create a subset of tin. Once a tin for input data points have been created, now we cannot uh, sub, uh, make a subset of tin. Whereas, when we have been discussing uh, the digital elevation model or concept of digital elevation model, this has come that uh, a subset of uh, digital elevation model can be created. This will be elaborated in subsequent lectures also. So, they, uh, there are uh, there are some is uh, advantages and disadvantages with both tin and raster and uh, because the tin uh, varies its sizes so that triangles vary in sizes based on roughness or complexity of terrain so it adopts the complexity complexity of terrain very easily whereas uh, raster is uh, incapable of doing thing and uh, it depends on wherever if a terrain is flat then large triangles are formed if terrain is having lot of undulation high ruggedness then small triangles will be formed the real example shown here that uh, on the left side we are having uh, a contour map and wherever we find the contours are very closely spaced and uh, in corresponding tin model we are seeing a small small triangles like here and wherever we find that the contours are very far away in this, these areas we are seeing triangles which are large here. So, this, uh, this is the biggest advantage with tin or one of the advantages with tin that it adopts to the complexity of the terrain whereas, ra in case of raster uh, there, there is a fixed size of the cell and shape as well. Uh, in the also one example that uh, here this is the typical raster has been uh, created using the same data sets and the uh, uh, corresponding tin using the same data set has also been created. As you can see that the, the because it is adaptable to terrain complexity and therefore, when we uh, display uh, you can you can visualize that the terrain looks much better and convincing as well. Now, so uh, we reach to this uh, discussion on uh, all all advantages associated with tin the terrain parameters like slope and aspect calculated for each triangle and stored as an attribute of the facet. That means that whenever we create a tin from input data points then at the same time these two derivatives are also created whereas in case of raster we have to further uh, drive these uh, two products. So, uh, in case of tin they are simultaneously created. For areas of complex relief, uh, tin works better than raster. So, if uh, somebody is working a terrain like Himalaya, then uh, raster may not be adaptable to the complexity whereas, tin is and therefore, uh, such rugged terrain like Himalaya can be represented very nicely using tin model. Uh, more detailed representation for higher density of data points. So, if you are having uh, because these uh, observation points or data points are never uniformly distributed. So, the advantage with the tin wherever you have the more density of points a uh, better representation can happen, but not in case of raster because the cell size and shape is fixed throughout one set of raster. And breakpoint features more accurate uh, re accurately represented 
in the tin. Uh, break point features can be ridges or valley bottoms or some geological structures like faults and other things. So, these, these features are also very nicely represented in tin rather than in raster. As mentioned, there are advantages, so disadvantages with tin. The disadvantage uh, uh, is that significantly more processing is required to generate tin compared to raster data, because raster data is a very simple data and therefore, generating raster data becomes uh, relatively faster as compared to tin and errors along edges often need correction and that is the problem with the tin that on the margins of your data set there might be some errors or uh, uh, they, they it does not complete the area. So, if somebody would like to have uh, you know a subset of the tin then it, it has to create again the tin taking the selected points. So, that is one problem and a subset of the uh, once the tin has been created then subset cannot be created whereas, in case of uh, raster or digital elevation model subsets can be created very easily. So, let us let's, let's compare now one to one that advantages and disadvantages that tin is at a, a you know ability to describe the surface at different levels of resolution. And uh, whereas, in case of raster easy to store and manipulate because it is a simple data structure and uh, it is easy integration with the raster databases. And uh, this point uh, I want to elaborate further on this that uh, because lot of other data sets uh, also comes in form of raster data like for example, satellite images. Satellite images are also raster. So, tin is a grid raster where satellite image is, uh, is a raster image and therefore, the integration as we have seen also in uh, uh, earlier lectures that uh, the integration of uh, satellite images with digital elevation model becomes very easy. And whereas, integration of digital elevation model with satellite images is quite difficult because the reason is that both data structures are completely different. Uh, this uh, tin is uh, because it is stored in form of tables. So, it is uh, storing is efficiency uh, uh, is efficient in case of tin, but uh, also raster in that case is not uh, difficult because it is a simple data structure. Raster is smoother and uh, uh, looks more natural appearance of dry terrain features uh, and the features and uh, might be slope aspect or drainage network and other things, but in case of tin. Uh, two main features are derived or generated at the time of construction of tin. But later on, once we fo uh, move forward uh, and along with the tin, we find sometimes difficult because not lot many derivatives can be derived from uh, using tin, whereas lot many derivatives can be derived. That is why it is said that the DEM is a storehouse of information, but not uh, uh, the typical tin but still uh, it represents the slope and aspect in a much better and accurate way as compared to our digital elevation model. And disadvantages in many cases it requires the visual inspection and manual control of the network. Whereas, in case of raster inability to use various grid sizes to reflect because e within one data set the cell size and shape have to be same throughout. And uh, this, this is the example that uh, we are having uh, the data without any break line. So, this is how it can be represented in form of tin uh, in a, a digital in a typical digital elevation model it would be represented and we can create also 3D view like this. But if we are having soft break lines then uh, soft break lines may be a drainage network which we consider as a soft break line. And uh, th uh, the same way a th 3D perspective view can be created, tin can be created, it becomes further complex as compared to the, with no break lines and then we uh, see a digit corresponding digital elevation model as well. Because while creating digital elevation models, break lines uh, can also be incorporated uh, be using not all uh, uh, interpolation technique, but uh, few interpolation techniques. And uh, like uh, then the, when we are having hard break lines, maybe some geological structures and other things and or maybe uh, some dikes or reefs 
quartz reefs and so on, then the uh, representation of these heartbreak lines becomes much more complex in case of tin as one can see and DM also becomes uh, much more uh, complex as compared to no break lines and this is how the three in 3D view it will appear. So, uh, break lines uh, because tin incorporates break line, so it is easier to handle the break lines in case of tin, but uh, in case of raster only two interpolation techniques allow us to use the uh, break line. Tin and uh, there are lot of many applications of tin, especially like uh, creating a surface, a driving slope and aspect, maybe 3D perspective view and so on so forth. But tin is also uh, create, uh, used for uh, many animations and other things which we will see uh, some examples. So, digital elevation models which are drawing from contour lines or in and through interpolations and uh, can be used for various works including like cut and fill analysis. And uh, this uh, surface restructure uh, reconstructions and construction of three dimensional models for industrial applications and uh, may be producing any animations for movies, games and simulators. And uh, for example, if I have to represent this animal, then it is easy uh, to create a 3D uh, view of this animal uh, or 3D wire mass structure of this animal uh, using tin model. And then uh, the some uh, the you know texture of the skin of this animal can be draped over it to visualize that uh, uh, it is close to the natural one. Whereas, uh, 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 because as you can see here that uh, in this uh, front part of the mouth part, uh, it is having very complex uh, representation and therefore, small triangles uh, have been formed here. But near the stomach part, it uh, the surface is not that undulated and therefore, it, it is represented through large triangles because that is the one of the biggest advantage of uh, tin is that it is adaptability. Uh, it is adaptable to complexity of the surface. Uh, this uh, tin is used extensively in animations and uh, to create the models of characters and these models help them uh, map the movement by a computers and uh, uh, because uh, uh, you know the movement can also be incorporated in that uh, with this uh, uh, tin models of animals or any other structures and therefore, they are extensively used in animations and these models are then given a computer generated a skin and they look something like this. So, a, a, three, a 3D models for animations can be created very easily with animation and uh, with the tri, uh, tin models, but uh, raster uh, data structures cannot be used here in that way. So, uh, uh, what are the tin derivatives? We have discussed to some extent, but anyway that uh, contours at desired intervals can be created of course, uh, slope and aspect these are the simultaneously created when we create the tin itself and uh, hill state can also be it is generated also at the same time and the planimetric area can also be calculated and the surface area can also be calculated volume above or tin surf, uh, below tin surface can also be created. So, many derivatives are possible are also possible with the tin model. And uh, here are the some examples that uh, our uh, the data set is this one. The point data as have been mentioned that uh, tin can only be created using point data and uh, when this point data is used to create a tin this is how it looks and uh, these uh, ranges have been then classified here to represent through different colors. Then you can drive slope map, you can also drive the aspect map uh, as these two derivatives are also possible with the digital typical digital elevation model or raster digital elevation model. And uh, this brings to the end of uh, this uh, uh, discussion uh, about uh, tin surface. Uh, the important thing which uh, I have also mentioned uh, uh, in this lecture is that uh, the tin is adaptable to the complexity of the terrain whereas, raster is not. The problem with uh, tin is that uh, though we can create tin quite easily 
and the softwares which we use, they are all supporting generation of TIN models. But the TIN cannot be carried forward for long because uh, it, it, uh, it does not uh, fit very well with other raster data sets because raster data sets are very common data sets one and lot of raster data sets are available free of course. For example, digital elevation models, for example, satellite images whereas TINs are not available uh, free of course. So, that becomes one more complexity with the TIN that later on, uh, later on we have to convert our TIN models into raster to proceed further. But if somebody is looking only up to say slope and aspect and some simple derivatives and uh, uh, in that project the requirements are not for like uh, surface ideological modeling or some other things, then TIN is the best uh, uh, available solution to represent the surface and these uh, derivatives. Thank you very much.